God of Mischief quilt pattern. Uh, I'm going to be breaking down every single step by step by step. I am doing this live on my YouTube channel, my YouTube live. Um, so I may be reacting sometimes to people in chat. Um, for the most part, though, I'm going to be teaching and educating and editing a lot of that stuff out. Um, and we have, we're going to speed up. So if I show you something cool, I'm going to show you everything. Meaning I'm gonna probably going to speed up through a couple of the different things. So... Let's get started. First off, patterns. Uh, you can get the pattern one of three ways. Um, the physical patterns can be found in your local quilt stores. Um, they can also be found from me when you see me in person. Um, I'm at conventions, uh, when I travel for quilt guilds, teaching, things like that. Um, when I can travel again one day. Uh, I have all my patterns with me, so you can buy physical patterns at that point. I also sell my downloadable PDF patterns online. Um, so if you go to my website, quiltony.com, or if you're watching this video, if you look down below, there's a link to all the Loki things, God of Mischief things on my website. Um, just click on that and it'll take you over there and you can purchase a downloadable pattern. Uh, the third way you can do it is I sell full kits. In my full kit, you get the physical pattern, but you also get all the fabric to make the quilt top. And I cut your strips for you. So this is, these are all the strips that you need pre-cut, ready to go to make this pattern. Uh, a couple of the things that are my favorite things in order to make this, of course, not just the pattern, um, scissors, you're going to need some good scissors for this. I love these ergonomic um, scissors from Famore. They're some of my favorites. Um, you're going to need some pins or clips. Uh, always seam ripper. You always, always need a seam ripper. You never know when you need it. And of course, you're going to need a rotary cutter and str uh, quilting straight edge. I didn't realize that they apparently don't use a lot of straight edges in regular sewing. Um, I thought it was like a normal sewing thing, but no, apparently this is a quilting straight edge. Uh, so you need a straight edge with your rotary cutter, or I'm going to be using the Stripology ruler. So this is a really cool ruler. There's a couple of different ones at this point. If you're watching this on, um, on YouTube for the actual breakdown of all of the streams, um, for the sped up thing, all whatever, it is, you can find links to this down below. So those are the biggest things. And then of course, you're gonna need your sewing machine, thread, bobbins, um, standard sewing machine things. Fabric. The biggest question I get asked uh, when people purchase my patterns is what kind of fabric should I use? I prefer blenders. So I am a big fan of blenders. Um, a blender is basically a fabric that is not a solid. It looks like it has some kind of movement, but it brings together the design. So it's a really cool, amazing fabric. There's a ton of different blenders. Um, the blenders that I am using for my God of Mischief quilt uh, are a mixture between the Toscana line from Northcott and the Marbles line from Moda. So I'll be using both of those together. Um, they're both very good, strong blenders. I am actually shifting my entire line over to the Northcott Toscana. Um, I have found that with the Toscanas, they actually show a little bit more movement, more pop. And if you can believe it, their colors are actually more vivid and bright, which is great for pixel quilting. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, can you use patterns? Of course. You can do anything you want to do. If you want to use patterns, use patterns. Um, it's interesting because I actually just purchased and pre-ordered a bolt of blue fabric that it's, looks like it's jeans and it's a pattern. And I'm going to be making some of my happy painters with that fabric. So it's, so keep those in mind as you are picking out your fabrics with, for the pixel quilts. Um, what's going to blend, what's going to look good. Um, and like I said, I'm a big fan of blenders. When it out, 
solids. There are some great, great solids out there. Um, remember the higher the thread count, the heavier and thicker that cotton fabric is, the longer it's going to last um, and show less wear and tear. So let's get started. All right, pattern. First off, with my patterns, if you have never done one of my patterns before, uh, they are laid out exactly the same. Every single pattern has, it, basically, if you open this pattern, it's going to look exactly the same, no matter what pattern you're looking at. At the very top over here, we give you some tips and some tricks. If you're an experienced quilter, you can skip this section. Basically, anytime we have things like this, you can skip it. Um, then we have our chart of things that you need to cut. So you need to cut them in three and a half inch strips and two inch strips. From those three and a half inch strips, you then cut these chunks. The two inch strips, you sew together in these combinations and then cut these chunks. And then all it is, it's a matter of laying out each of your pieces in relation to these chunks that you cut. The arrows are which way you iron those pieces so that you nest your seams every single time for perfect points. And then you add on your borders. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Um, now, I do advise, if you get a PDF downloadable pattern, I am a huge fan of using little pieces of paper to, to follow along and to make sure that I've, I know where I'm going and what I'm doing. Um, so you may want to print it out. You may want to print that, paper, that, that pattern out in color. Trust me, black and white, it's going to be a little confusing. So when you print it out and follow along, it's going to make it a lot, lot easier. We talked about the uh, patterns. We talked about colors. Um, this, of course, is an example of a quilt that I have made um, with most of these fabrics. I've switched some out for this one. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to take my kit and set my kit aside because I'm going to leave that. So if you guys want to buy it, you can. I don't need this one right now. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my strips. Um, of course, if you purchase the kit for me, you've already got this. Your strips are already cut. Um, so that's the first thing that I'm going to do is cut those strips. Uh, and then we'll talk and, and move on to the next one. Now, whenever you're looking at your pattern, make sure you take a look at this chart right here. It tells you the three and a half inch strips and it tells you the two inch strips. So find your colors. Now on the backs of the patterns, it tells you exactly how much you need in all of the fabrics. But if you open it up right here, it actually has the color code. So if you're not sure, whenever you are going to purchase your patterns about like the general shade of what we recommend, look on this page right here. And these are the general shades that we recommend. Now you can always change that always change that. Now, another thing that I do want to point out at this time before we start cutting, um, this is an old pattern before we started thinking about skin tones in the actual characters. You can use any skin tone you want. You do not have to follow this picture. If you want to make his horns and his staff bright pink, make his horns and his staff bright pink. You create the patterns, make what you would like to make. So that being said, the next time I do another print of these, this is not going to say tan, that's going to say skin tone. And all of our patterns from this point on are going to say skin tone, okay? This was just back whenever we initially started creating patterns, we, we just created it and we just called each color what it what with the color. We didn't think about what the colors represented. So we have updated that and in the future, those will be changed. All right, so let's take a look at these. I mean, I'm gonna go right down my list. That's right down my stack right here. That's always the easiest. So I'm gonna grab my light blue and cut these. So at this point, we wanna look at our pattern and decide how many do I need? Now, the nice thing about using the stripology ruler, and again, 
I am not sponsored by Stripology. It is not something that, uh, this, that they have given me. I purchased my ruler. I do not, I'm not in a partnership with them at all. It's just a perfect ruler, in my opinion, for strip quilting. So I'm lining up the top right here, making sure that's there. Now, whenever you're cutting your strips, always, always, always trim this up. So this area right here needs to be trimmed up. That's because you want to square your fabric before you make your actual cuts. So this is an important thing. You want straight cuts in your strips. Okay, so let me go ahead and start cutting these. So I'm cutting my three and a halves. Yeah, I got caught there a little bit. Okay, and then I need my twos. Now I am not going to say exactly how many strips you need because I don't want people watching the video instead of getting the pattern. This is to help you with the pattern, kind of like a, um, an accompaniment. And so then that way people are more confident in quilting. And if you see one of my patterns in a store, you're like, hey, she's got videos on how to do this. I'm gonna do that. There we go. There we go. And that's it. That's all I'm doing for this first step is cutting these strips. Now, if you're using a standard straight edge, you may notice that it's gonna take you a little bit longer to cut those strips because as you cut, you're gonna to have to move the fabric or move the straight edge. That's perfectly okay. As long as you're able to keep that straight edge straight, that is perfectly fine. So. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of the fabric then from uh, the rest of the strips in the pattern and speed up the rest of the video until we finish cutting all those strips. Um, set aside all of the two inch strips. Okay, so now after we finish step number one, we're going to cut our three and a half inch strips. So we're going to set aside all of our two inch strips. There we go. So these are going to get set aside over here. And now we're going to cut these. So now we're going to finish step number one and cut all of our chunks out of these. Now you have three different size chunks from these strips. Our chunk number one is a three and a half by six and a half inch piece. Chunk number two is a three and a half inch square. And chunk number three is a two by three and a half inch rectangle. If you are new to quilting and you're not comfortable measuring out those chunks, I do have my own template set. Uh, this is a template set with all three. I am personally out of stock at this point. However, if you're watching this video on YouTube or on my website, 
There's a link down below either to my own website or to the Martelli website where you can pick these up. Um, so you can buy them from myself whenever I have them in stock, or you can buy them directly from Martelli at all times. So those are just giving you a general idea of those. Hello, Azul. How are you today? I am doing wonderful. Thank you. Now, the point of these, of these chunks, in fact, I'm going to show you one of my templates on the first one. Um, we are doing... Let's see, the first is the gray. So let me get that gray fabric. Whenever you have your fabric, the first thing you want to do is iron it. So I'm going to take it over to my ironing board and do that. So we have our, our fabric, our strip fabric, all ironed. Now we have the, it wants us to cut two three and a half inch squares. So using the templates, I can take the three and a half inch square and the first thing I want to do is cut off the selvage. So I'm going to take my template and I'm going to lay it here on the end of that selvage and that's where I'm going to cut. Just like that. And if you move this over, you see the selvage is now cut off. Now I need two three and a halves. It's already folded in half, so I'm actually cutting two at a time. So I'm gonna take my three and a half and I'm gonna lay it here. And there's my perfect block. Whoops, I didn't cut through all the way. There we go. And there's my three and a half inch pieces. So that's what these templates do is they allow you to lay them just like that so you can cut as you are going along. It's not, it's, it's easier to do that. You can also use a straight edge or you can use a stripology ruler if that is what's easier for you. All right, so with that one, we are done with that. I'm gonna take the rest of my gray strip and I'm gonna set it aside out of the way because I don't need it because that's all I need. All right, next up, I need, oh, I apologize. I didn't even read my own pattern. I also need two rectangles of the two by three and a half. So again, I'm gonna line it up along here. I am apparently am not cutting it hard enough. Uh, and then there are my rectangles that I need. All right, so now I can take this, set this aside. The next one I have is this fabric. Uh, I need, all right, let me iron this and then I'll come back and cut it. Now, for this one, I'm going to show you how to cut your chunks using a regular straight edge. Okay, because I want to show you all the methods. Obviously, this is the one that I prefer, but I'm going to show you all the methods. So, from here, I need... So, the first thing I want to do, again, is trim off the salvage. There we go. Then... Uh, the next one says I only want one six and a half. Well, I like to cut it in twos. I like to cut sets. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it as a set and then take one of them and set it aside. So there's one with my pattern. The other I'm going to set over here out of the way. Then I need four three and a half. So there's two. four, and then for my twos, I just need two. So these are three and a half inch. So this is, remember how we're chunking it. We're chunking it by six and a half, by three and a half, or by two. And just like that, we have all the pieces cut. All right, so extra fabric. So I'm gonna set that aside. There we are. Up out of the way. All right, next is black. Now, last but not least, I want to show you the stripology way of doing it. And then I will, after I show you this way, I will speed up the camera for the rest of my cutting of my pieces. So first thing I want to do is iron this because we always want to iron that out. Now, you can use this method with any of these three, but I'm actually going to layer them too. So I'm actually going to cut them four at a time. So let me iron these and then I'll lay it out and show you what I mean. 
There's the one. I remember the first time someone showed me this, it blew my mind. So how you layer them, you take the bottom one and you line it up using your cutting mat as your guide. Take your second one and lay it directly on top. Use your cutting mat as your guide. Don't use the bottom fabric, use the cutting mat as the guide. Then lay your ruler down, whether it's the stripology, the, um, the templates, or a straight edge. Trim off the salvage, and then cut. All right, so black, I need three six and a halfs. There's four. I need nine three and a halfs. So there's one, two, three and a half. Four, eight, and then I need 19 twos. Okay, so four, eight, 12. Let's see, can I get a two out of here? No, it's just a little too short. So that's going to be scrap. So I only need three of these, so I'm going to take that and set that aside. I need four eights, so that means I need to cut two more on here, because I need nine. Okay. And of course, I only have one strip left, so I'm cutting two at a time. So there's my ninth. I'm gonna set that one aside for a future quilt. And then I need how many of these? 19. So there's four, eight, 12, and 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I'm counting them one more time to make sure. 4, 8, 12, 14, 16, 18, and I only need 19, so I'm taking one away, and there's 19. And that's it. That's how you cut the solid chunks. If you have any questions or concerns and you're watching this, rec this recorded video, put them down below. I'd be more than happy to answer them, or you can always pop into my YouTube lives. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of the chunks and speed it up to make the time go by fast. have all of our solid chunks. So all of our solid chunks are all cut out ready to go. So we're completely done with step number one. Step number two now, we want to combine together our two and a half inch strips to make these comboed pieces. So now we're going to take our two and a half inch strips and lay them out. So I always like to do this. I like to lay out my strips all lined up so it's easy for me to grab it. So first one, tan to gold, tan to green, tan to black, gray to black, three black to three blue. So I'm gonna actually do it blue to black. So there's one, two, three, and then three black to two green, oh, two black to two green. I can read, I can read. There's one, two, uh, two black to two gold. One, two, and then
and then one gray to one gold, one gray to one gold. Now you notice you have five two inch strips left over of the light blue. This is your border. This is your first background border before you add additional borders of your own. And I'm actually going to teach you how to add additional borders in, uh, in this tutorial, by the way, because at the end of the pattern, it says add any additional borders as you wish. I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to take these and set these aside, and we're going to deal with those at the end. So now I'm going to take these and we're going to strip piece them together. So let's go stripping. Stripping. Basically, all I'm doing is sewing these two strips together. The best way that I like to strip piece is take your first fabric, take your second fabric, make sure you shake them out, shake your strips out to make sure they're not caught. Do you know how many times I've sewn a, a fabric strip to a fabric strip and had, a, had it caught in here? Yeah. Seriously, it is. And then I realize it afterwards and I'm like, yeah, I sew these with a quarter inch seam because I am quilting with them. So the first thing I want to do is take my scrap. Um, if you want to know how to chain piece, which is using the scrap in here, I do have a video on it. Um, and so I'm going to take these. I like just lining up these first two. It would help if I had it correct. You want to go right side to right side. So right side to right side, I'm going to lift up my presser foot and just set that in there. Now I'm going to be sewing these with a scant quarter inch. In the case of the quarter inch piecing foot, I'm sewing it just to the left of this piece of metal. If you're using your machine, you want to just move your needle a little bit if you don't have one of these things. I actually have a video all about scant quarter inches and how to do it. All right, so the easiest way that I know how to do it, I take my forefinger, I stick it right here. I take the rest of my fingers, I put them in down here. I take my thumb, I've got it right on top. And then what I'm doing as I'm sewing is this. So I'm moving my thumb with this top fabric back and forth to make sure it's constantly lined up right here as it's going in the machine. So let me show you. So let's fix this. Now, I've got this right here, just like this, and I'm not pushing my fabric. I'm not pulling my fabric. Let the feed dogs of the machine carry the fabric for you. So my left hand, I'm actually not doing a thing. And as you see, I'm just taking this top fabric and going back and forth in order to line this up. And that's it. So it takes a lot of practice in order to do it. The biggest thing that people have problems with is if their fabric goes this way or if their fabric starts going this way. If your fabric starts going this way and you have too much, you're gonna have to use your seam ripper and undo it. If it goes this way and you have too little of a seam, oh, that's easy. You can just put it right back in that machine and redo it. Um, so this is actually what's going to set you up for success for the rest of your quilt. If you can strip piece straight ish, then your pieces are going to be lined up nicely. Everything's going to measure properly and you won't have any issues at all. As you see, I'm only doing it one handed, making sure that everything lines up correctly. So my advice is if you want to learn how to strip piece um, quickly, just grab a bunch of scraps, make a scrap quilt, sew some scraps together, and just practice feeding them into the machine with no pins, no glue, nothing. When you master strip piecing just like this, it's gonna go so much faster and you'll be so much happier. All right, so at this point, I am now going to sew all of these sets of strips together and we're gonna speed through it.
more strips in. So now I'm going to take my scrap fabric and put it into clearance. And then I'm going to free my strips. And then I'm going to grab all of these. And I'm going to bring them over to the mats. And I'll show you the next step. Next, we've done the first part of step two. Now we want to cut each of these newly combined strips in half. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. There we are. So all I'm doing in here is I'm separating it from there. I'm taking this, I'm folding this whole thing in half and then lining it up. Now, the best practice of doing this is look at the salvages and get the most bang for your buck. So get the most fabric out of there that you can before you cut that in half. Now, as a preference, I like to have my cut pieces on the left hand side as I'm ironing. So we've got that and that's all I'm doing. I'm just going down and trimming fabric. Is this the next one? That's the next one. Okay, there it is. There it is. So all I'm doing is trimming and then cutting it in half. So let's do all of them. So all of our strips are now ready to go. I'm gonna actually move aside all of those um, and move aside all of that and that because our next step is we're going to cut these. So let me grab my ironing board. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take each side. So if you take a look at it, it says the next step is to take the tan and gold strips. So let's grab our tan and gold strip right there. We're going to iron one side towards the tan and then the other side towards the gold. All right. So I'm taking this when I'm going to iron this flat. So let's do that now. I'm doing what's called locking in those seams. I'm ironing this and then I want to iron this towards the tan just like that. You notice how there's this nice straightish seam there? That's because I locked that seam in. You always want to iron that seam before you iron it up. Just like that. And then if we take a look at it closely, it's now pointing towards the tan. So whenever you take a look at your pieces, if you grab a piece that points towards the tan, that's this one. So our seam goes in that direction. So now let's iron the other one. And then this one, we're ironing it in the opposite direction. We're ironing this towards the gold. So, oops, let me actually lock my seam in all the way first. So I'm ironing this towards the gold. If you have problems ironing it, <laughs> oh, excuse me, if you have problems ironing it into a nice crisp seam, try steam. Put steam in your iron and use steam. There we are. So now at this point, I'm going to take my bottom piece, I'm going to flip it up over that top piece, and we're going to trim them. So I'm going to move my, my ironing board and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm nesting these seams. I'm taking my fingers and I'm moving the fabric back and forth in order to hit those nested seams. So you see here how the seams are going in opposite directions and it's all lined up perfectly just like that. That is a nested seam. And then I'm going to cut some pieces. Now, you notice how in the directions it says to cut a set. That means we're cutting two pieces at the same time. Now, we're also, we can use the templates. So this one, I'm going to show you the template one. So in this case, 
I need one set of three and a half. So the first thing I'm gonna do, just like with the last one, let's cut off the very end and square it up. Oops. It's almost time to change my blades again in my rotary cutter. Then I went one set of three and a half. And there it is. There's my set of three and a halves. Then I need three sets of the twos. There's one, two, three. Now, you can, of course, do this with your regular straight edge or your stripology ruler. You don't have to use the templates. It's just an option. Now, the rest of this I'm going to fold and set aside because that's extra. Now, whenever I'm opening up these pieces, I find it's easier if I make two separate stacks. One stack has all the fabric going in one direction. The other stack has it going the other direction. So this one is going towards the gold. This one is going towards the tan. So you see how they're laid out differently and those seams point in different directions. That is what those arrows mean with pointing in the different directions. However your seam goes is how you're going to lay it out. All right, so I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna set this aside and let's, I'm gonna go ahead and iron all the rest of them and then we're gonna go back and do some cutting on them. remaining pieces. So I'm going to pull these off the stack one by one. I'm going to look through my pattern. And remember, all we're going to do is go down the pattern line by line and take a look at them. So the tan and the green, we need one set of the, uh, the three and a half. We need one set of the two inch. Uh, now remember, whenever you're doing a set, you're doing two together. So we are nesting those seams. So we're putting these together. We're nesting those seams, making sure, I'm using my fingers to make sure it's nested all the way down, and then, and then cutting what I need to do. Um, once I cut what I need to do, I'm going to set them aside. Remember, I like to put them in two separate piles, one going iron the one direction, and then the other ironed the other direction. And then once I've got these in the two separate piles, I will then grab the next one, cut that one and keep on going. So at this point, go ahead and cut all of your combined pieces. If, if you're watching this um, with the combined video, I'm gonna fast forward through all of my cutting of it because I've already showed you step-by-step -step how to do it. Uh, and then we'll come back for laying out of our pieces.
of our pieces and I wanted to put it on this camera angle so I can show you over here exactly how I lay all my pieces out. Um, you may not have a table like I have that's this big in order to lay the pieces out. So I'm going to show you two different strategies of doing it. The first strategy, as you can see, I've got everything stacked up here all together. The first strategy is to lay it down just like this with your little pieces on top of your big pieces. Um, and as you're laying it out, just do that. Um, and then this is a good way to keep all of the pieces together. I always suggest separating out your, uh, the way that the, the seams go. So remember this one goes towards the black, this one goes towards the gold. So separate those because it's gonna be easier and I'll show you as we're laying our pieces out row by row. Uh, and then as you see here, there we go there, and then there, and then there. Great. Now, and then of course you've got this. Now you see how, same thing with the solids. I just keep all of the colors together for those just like this. Now, this is not how I'm gonna lay mine out. I'm actually gonna separate each and everything. But if you do it this way, this is as much space as you do. Another cheating way that I do is I take a look at my pattern. And when I lay my pieces out, I go from the bottom up. I start with the bottom row. I'm weird, I normally don't start with row number one. I start at the bottom, I start at row 15. So if I'm starting at row 15, I'm not gonna need the blue. I'm not going to need a lot of the skin tone. So I can take a lot of this green and gold and gray over top of the skin tone and then go back in and pull those when I need those underneath. Um, so there's a way to layer it and do all that to make it more efficient. If you have plenty of room, if you have enough room, lay your pattern out. Um, remember, I like to have a physical pattern and not on the um, a tablet or anything else because I personally like to take pieces of uh, scrap paper and lay it over so I know exactly what row I'm working on because you're going to go through different passes of the rows. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then when you're doing that, it's easy to keep track of row by row just like this. So how I lay my things out is over here where I, oh, I can do that there and there and then there. And then I like to lay it along the top over here, which you're not going to see on the camera. So here I lay each and every single piece out. There's that one. And then there's that. And then the blue I can hide over here. This is all of my extra fabric. Yes, you're going to have waste. Yes, you can just go ahead and make a scrap uh, runner out of your extra. One of these quilt alongs, I'm going to actually talk about the, um, the extra scrap fabric that you can do, and I'll make a video on it. All right, and then here is this one. And then this one. All right, so I do want room for this. Let me move these over here so I can have this. In fact, let me take this and fold it this way. There we are. Now I have more room. Oh, there we go. There's that. And that. there and there can I move yeah I can move that over a bit great and then now I have more room great yeah as you can see from mine I really like to lay every single piece out so that I can see what I'm doing there we go. All right, every single thing is laid out just like that. 
um, and I can grab all my pieces. So you'll see as I'm laying my rows out, I'm going to be grabbing from here. You're just not going to see this whole layout like it is. All right, so now I have everything laid out. Now we're going to start laying it out row by row. So I'm going to take a look at my pattern. And like I said, I like to work from the bottom up. So I'm going to start with row 15. Now remember, these pieces that we cut here, these solid pieces, show a picture that then relates here. So remember the, um, the black, come on, let me grab this piece. So this piece right there looks like that piece right there. And that's our three and a half by our six and a half. Remember these pieces right here are our combined pieces. When in doubt what a piece looks like, go back to where you did your cutting and find and look to see what the colors are. So go back and forth if you need to. Okay, so let's do this. And I'm gonna start with row 15 because I'm weird. I'm gonna start 15 and I'm gonna work my way up. I'm actually gonna go four rows at a time. So I'm gonna lay out row 15. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna lay out row 14 show you how to do that, and then we'll speed up the camera a bit for uh, 13 and for 12. Um, and then we'll start, I, we'll start sewing and ironing and combining those together. All right, so let's get to it. So our row 15, the biggest thing you have to keep in mind is those arrows. The arrows point the way that your seam needs to go. So now you see why it's so important that you separate these out you know, for which way the seam is pointing, because those arrows point the correct direction, okay? So row 15 is pointing to the right. So that means I'm going to take my pieces, and if I have a combined piece, I'm gonna make sure that's pointing to the right. So there's a solid piece there and there. Now, I like to group mine in sets of two. Whenever I group it in a set of two, um, it allows me to, um, to easily pick it up and pin it together for sewing. Now, this one is a combined piece. However, it's not pointing in a direction. It is actually just like this. So it honestly does not make a difference which way you put that seam. The next piece has no seam at all. So it doesn't make a difference. So I've got that right there. Now, the next piece does. The next piece is a uh, black and blue combined three and a half inch strip. Remember, we need to go to the right with our arrows. So I'm gonna take the combined strip, and because it has to go this way. So I'm taking the combined strip where it's pointing towards the black. So whenever I do all of my ironing, the arrow is pointing that direction. Because the arrow is pointing in that direction, my seam goes in that direction. All right, so let's keep laying these out. Now the next one is another three and a half black and blue combined. However, it goes this way, so the seam direction doesn't make a difference. Um, as a habit, I like to pick the opposite one of the one I just used. That way I have a nice even set because when I'm grabbing the pieces from over here, I like to keep the piles pretty even when it comes to you know seams in different directions because then that way I'm not scrambling for a different seam at the end. All right, and then this. Okay, and then a black and blue, just like that. And then a green and blue. Now this next one, remember I said before, they, there was not another one with a seam in another direction. This one does. So this one, I picked the one where my seam is going up towards the black. This one means it needs to go opposite because we talked about nesting seams. This is exactly what we're gonna do right here. We're making sure whenever we have two pieces that we need to sew together, our seams go in opposite directions. And this allows us to nest it. So this goes towards the black. So the next one needs to go down towards the black with the black and green. If you ever watch me when I'm making quilts, when I'm streaming on Twitch, I'll mumble to myself all the time because I'm mumbling, 
towards the black, towards the green, towards the, the white, towards the gold. Like, I'll say these in my head and mumble it to remind myself to make them opposites and in order to make sure that those seams nest and they, they line up nicely. All right, so there's that one. Now I need a three and a half black. Okay, and then, oh, I've got some more. So I've got a green one. Now I'm gonna do this right here so you can see what I'm doing and then I'll set it to the right. So in this case, it's going towards the green. The next one, I need to go down towards the black just like this. And then my last piece, I need to go up towards the black. Now, this is very, very easy to flip your piece the wrong direction. I still do it. I still flip my pieces. It's just a habit. It's, yeah. So what I do to make sure I don't is at this point, I skim through and I check the pieces just to make sure that everything is facing the correct direction. Now, hopefully it's already has all of the correct seams pointing in all the different ways. So I'm not checking that. I'm just checking the overall and this is correct. Okay. So I'm going to move these over here. So now remember I said the arrow goes in the, goes towards the right. That means I'm going to pick up this right piece, flip it over this left piece and pin it into place. Well, why do we do that? Because all I have to do, I'm going to sew this into the machine just like this, but then I don't have to do anything. I can take this and go right to my ironing board and iron this. And then once I iron it like that, my seam's going to go to the right exactly how it's supposed to be. So if you pick up and, and set yourself up for success, you're going to save time which is I am all about efficiency and saving time. So you'll save time by taking this right to the ironing board and then ironing the seam just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're taking up right over left and then I'm pinning this into place. Okay, and then we're taking right over left. Now you notice I can do it one of two different ways. I can take it like this and then turn it and pin it I've learned through the years, it's just easier to turn it and do it just like this. It's faster for me and it's easier. So the rest of this row, I'm just going to pick up the right one, flip it over the left and pin it into place. Okay. Then I'm going to speed through speed, 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 speed. Okay, when we get to the end of row 15, I do have a lonely little piece. I'm just going to set that right there. It is perfectly okay to have leftover pieces. The next pass that we go through, we're going to make sure that we include this lonely little piece right here um, in, into our quilt. So you don't have to worry about it at this point. All right, so let's go up to row 14. Now row 14, remember I said 15, it's pointing to the right. So 14 is pointing to the left. This allows us to make sure if we're ironing everything this way and we iron everything this way, that automatically those seams are gonna line up, lock in place, nest, and we're gonna get perfect points every single time. All right, so let's take a look at it. We have this one. And now this next one, we're pointing to the left. So I need to make sure the piece that I get points to the left and I'm going to pick up this one right here and then pick up this one right here and then to the left. So it needs to go towards the black and then green. go and then black and then towards the black this is what I mean I, I normally mumble this stuff to myself 
for which way I'm doing it. Okay, and then this one doesn't matter. And then towards the green. And then a solid green, three and a half. And then a black. All right, now let's double check everything. Make sure that I did it right and I didn't miss any pieces. Nope, I'm good. Everything matches up. So remember I said row 14, it goes to the left. So that means I'm taking the left piece and flipping it over the right piece and pinning it into place. Because remember when I'm this is sewed and I'm ironed, I want to iron it just like that. So it's easier if I pick up this left over right and then pin that into place. And then you can set yourself up for success and have it go super fast and efficient. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pin the rest of this row and then I'm going to lay out the next two rows and pin them as well. Hold up, time out. You know what I forgot? I forgot that we have horizontals in this pattern. So the, I, lay, I do it like this and I say lay all the pieces out if you're able to lay them all out. I don't even have a big enough piece to lay it all out. But there are two horizontal pieces. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop right now and get those combined and sewn. All right, so let's find those two horizontals. So the first one is this one and it is a, the first one is a black with a gold and skin tone in row number nine. It's going to look row number nine. The arrow goes to the right. Okay. So I need to go towards the gold with that skin tone and gold. So skin tone and gold. There it is. And then I need to go towards the gold. So just like this towards the gold. Okay. And then the next one, I need a gold, solid gold, not the record, the piece of fabric, and then a green and black. It's row 13. So I'm going to look over here. Row 13 goes to the right. So I need to go towards the black for green and black. There we go. And it goes like this. So now it doesn't make a difference which way I pin and iron these as long as they get sewed together. So I'm going to go ahead and just sew these and iron these. And then I'll have these combined pieces, my horizontal pieces is what we call them. And I can start laying my stuff back out again. So once we've got those two horizontal pieces together, I then can continue on laying my pieces out. So let me go back into row 13 and this is the way that it is. And it's going to the right exactly like it's supposed to be. All right, let's continue on, continuing on. All right, so I've got that one. Now I did that one down towards there. So this has to go up towards the light gray. Uh-oh, I have to re-iron it right away. So this one is my last black and gray and it goes towards the black, but I ironed this down. So this one needs to go up because they're going in the same direction. So I need to re-iron one. So I'm going to go ahead and re-iron this one. So I'm going to take it over to my ironing board and just quickly re-iron it. Now, when I re-iron pieces, I like to re-iron the wrong side first and then re-iron the correct side. And now it's pointing exactly where I needed to point. And it's right there. All of our rows are, are pinned together. So now we're going to sew them. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up each pile. 
I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and we're going to sew them with a quarter inch seam. Just like we sewed our combined two inch strips together, uh, we're gonna sew these. So I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna lift it up and I'm gonna use chain sewing. Remember, if you haven't chain sewn before, I do have a video all about chain sewing, how you can use your leader fabric, um, what it means, what you do. And here, when you get to the end, you wanna pick up the next piece, lift up your presser foot, have it touch the needle and keep moving forward. Okay, so when we have all of our pieces chained in, cut your leader fabric, put it in there and do that. Now, I, now we need to separate our chained pieces. I use the cutting gizmo, which is by um, uh, uh, the Gypsy Quilter. Uh, again, I paid for it. I'm not there. I'm not sponsored by them. They don't support me. Um, I'm not an ambassador. I just love it um, because the nice thing about this, here, I'll actually do it right there so you can see it, is it allows you to quickly separate your chained pieces. Now, this is the older model. They do have a newer one. Um, that was just released as of the time of this video. I haven't picked it up yet. However, I have ordered it from my distributor. So whenever I can get down to my US address and get to all of the stuff down there, I should be able to pick up that newer one. So we have all of our chained pieces. So at this point, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it behind me because I'm going to sew all four of those first before we go to iron. So I'm going to be efficient. I'm going to do all of my sewing and then I'm going to move and do all of my ironing and then I'm going to do all of my combining and so on and so on until we get the entire row. All right. So let me finish sewing the rest of these. We have all of our rows sewn, so now let's iron them. Let me go ahead and grab my board. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm just going to lay it out line by line. Okay, And remember to lock your seams in. Always lock your seams in before you iron. This is to make sure that when you're ironing, you're ironing a straight line. It's easier to iron a straight line when you lock those seams in. Now you notice all I'm doing is I'm lifting this up and then ironing it forward. And then this way, the seam is ironed in that direction. And it's just a super easy way to make sure that your uh, seams are ironed in the correct direction. And remember, I didn't have to check anything. I didn't have to do anything because I, because I picked up my fabrics um, a certain way and I, I pinned them a certain way and kept them like that when I was sewing them, then that is the way it's supposed to go. Now, whenever I'm looking back again, I need to make sure that these are laid out and pointed in the correct direction. So this is row 15. So row 15, my seams are ironed to the right. Okay, so I'm gonna take that and just lay that down on row 15. And now I'm gonna take row 14. I'm gonna do the same exact thing, laying out all of those pieces of row 14. Number 
12. Okay, I'm done with my ironing board, so I'm gonna move that aside. And now we're gonna lay our pieces out. So remember I said we already have it pointed the correct direction. So I'm gonna count my pieces and see if they're even or odd. Because remember, we had this little lonely piece that was sitting outside by itself for that first pass. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's why I was counting it. Do I have an even number of pieces that's going to include this lonely little piece? The answer is no. So in that case, I'm going to take this first piece and set it aside. And then I'm going to sew the rest of these together. Now, I know because I've done this a couple of times before, these pieces are all ready in the order that they need to be in in order to be good. So I'm actually double checking to make sure these are all still in the correct order. Because I pick them up a certain way after I iron them. Yep, they are. They're already in the order that I need to pin them. So everything is to the right, or everything is pointing to the right. So all I have to do is take this piece right here and sew it to that piece right there. And then if I look and double check, yep, sure enough, that's all correct for row number 15. Now, if you're not sure, you can, of course, lay all your pieces out. So I'll show you that on the next one. So this is the efficient, hey, I've done this correct way of doing it. The next one, I will show you, there we go. There we are, the next one. First, let's count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have an even number. If I had an odd number, I would still take that first one off because we want to be consistent. If we're taking away that first piece, we want to take away the first piece for every single row. So in this case, let's lay them out. So we've got this one and then this one. Because remember, I'm pinning two and two together. And yep, that's correct. And that's correct. And that's correct, and that's correct. So if you're not sure if your pieces are laid out correctly, do exactly that. Lay them out for the entire row and double check before you pin them together. So now remember 14, the arrow goes to the left. So I'm picking that left over the right and pinning that into place. There we go. I'm taking that left over the right and pinning it into place. And in fact, just to make it easier, I will do this, what I just showed you here for the last two rows. Okay, so counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have an odd number, so I'm gonna take away that first one Okay, that is correct. There we go. And then there. Great. And then this is going to the right. So I'm picking the right over left and pinning it into place. Now, whenever you do these, remember for nesting, they have to, they're in opposite directions. You're making sure that they line up perfectly whenever you pin them in place. Um, and then that makes sure that you're gonna get perfect points every single time. Now, there's a trick at this point because if you notice, you've already got some seams on here. Now, 
if I were to just lay this down and iron this, well, what's going to happen? These seams are not going the same direction. So whenever you have this laid down, what you need to do is make sure either you're looking at the pattern and going, okay, well, oh, it goes this way. Okay, so I need to iron that way and look at the pattern. Or a trick that I use, whenever you're ironing, the top should always be going down. So that top right there, your seam should be pointing down and the back should be pointing up. Because if you iron it like this, Let's go ahead and pretend like we've ironed this and pinch it. See what's happened? Everything is now going in the same direction. So make sure the top is pointing down. The back is pointing up. Okay, so let's go there, there, there. And there, there we are. There's my three. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and iron all these and then I will lay everything out and pin it again. And then I will keep on going and then come back and show you the actual rows and how to do those. Oh, wait, no, wrong way. This way. Now, oh, before I do that, I almost forgot. Whenever you're putting this again, remember, we, this is the front piece. We have to take this piece and set it on top. And then we can set it aside. Don't forget that. If you have the pieces over here, don't forget if they're in the front or in the back. That's why I leave them all the way over here to remind me that they're in the front. Okay, now I'm going to speed it up and do it. done this correctly or if you've made a mistake if you've flipped a piece okay so let me do it so I'm only looking at 15 and 14 so this is to the right so there's 15 and this one goes to the left and there's 14 and now I'm gonna take a look at the two to make sure that yes in fact, I'm going to look at this one to make sure that, yep, yeah, nope, that. I'm looking at page four, which has the, the rows sewn together so it's easier to line up. Yep, that's correct. All right, so at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom row. I'm going to flip it up over this top row. And what we're going to do is we're going to pin all of the connected seams. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for the first part where two seams join together. So you see there's two seams on top here, but there's nothing there. This where my finger is, is the first time I have two seams joining together. And you see, because we've ironed them in opposite directions, our seams are nesting, okay? So what we're doing is we're going to make sure we have those seams nested right there. And then I'm gonna put a pin in there. Once my pin is in there, now I'm going to go back through and put pins in the rest of these seams and a pin that's on the end. Now, the reason why we do this is when we iron this, we want to make sure that these seams stay flat as we iron. We don't want them to flip back and get caught and cause extra bulk. 
So by putting clips or pins in there, it's making that happen. So now I'm going to move down. Oh, there's my next one. So I'm going to move the fabrics around to make sure that these two seams butt up right up against each other. Remember, we're nesting. We're making sure those seams are right against each other. Now, at this point, you notice that top fabric has got a little bit more fabric than the bottom. That's perfectly okay. That's natural because look what happens whenever you stretch these two. They're now flat. So make sure, so this is how we do that now. So if you have a fabric on top or bottom that is a little bit longer, you wanna take your two pins, stretch it, and then hold the center and put a pin in it. And you see how now it's fine. But we're gonna go back through and put pins in at the remaining, oh, nope, just the one the remaining seams. And that's it, that's all we're doing. So we're gonna find this one right here. The next one's right there. We're gonna put a pin in there. And there's one there. And where is, oh, it's all the way, oh, all the way down here is the next one. So let's go ahead and nest those up, put a pin in there, and then now let's go back. I'm stretching, there we go. I'm gonna put a pin in the center and then work my way on each one. Always, always start by putting a pin in the center and then when you've got, then you work on each side of it. Um, it evens it out, it distributes it, it makes it a lot better. Okay, so then we've got that right there. Now, obviously I'm gonna be doing it a lot faster than you are because I have been doing this a really long time and I'm the one that uh, made these patterns. <laughs> You're not gonna do it this fast. It is perfectly okay. The more patterns of mine that you do, the faster you're going to get, the better at them you're going to get. There we are. And there is rows 15 and rows 14. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold these up and set that aside. And then next, Really quickly, I'm going to iron rows 13 and 12, and we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to move the area on my pattern to see that I'm only looking at 12 and 13. Let's see if I did this right. Here's 13. That's to the right. This is to the left and there's 12. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over. I'm only looking at 13 and 12. This one always throws me off, but no, that's correct. That's correct, that's the bottom of his hand. That looks right. Yep, that is correct. All right, so I'm gonna take this Flip it over here and do the exact same thing I just showed you on the other one. Finding those nested seams, pinning, and then working my way through the whole thing. Then, after I finish pinning this one, you now know what to do. You can now do that for the remaining 11 rows. So I'm going to go through... I'm going to lay all the remaining 11 rows out. If I come across any issues or things I forgot to mention before, I'll stop the fast forward and show them to you just like I've been doing. However, I may just fast forward through the whole remaining 11 rows. Remember, if you have any questions at all of my patterns of what I've done so far, you know, send me a message, leave a comment, do something, and I'd be more than happy to respond to you. There we are. And just like that. Oops, oops, there we go. It wasn't quite nesting and I had to fix it. Nest that baby. And yes, I use my nails as pin stops. I told you I use my nails as, uh, as sewing as sewing tools, and there you go. 
There's the next one. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to fold this. I'm going to set that aside. And now when I'm storing it, I'm going to store them just like this. So I know that that's my last row. That's my next to last row and so on and so on. All right, let's do the rest of the rows. missing a piece out of there. Okay, learning moments. So at this point in the video, I'm probably going to take it off of uh, super fast forward and show you because I made a mistake. As I was laying these pieces out, I discovered whenever I laid them out, as you saw, the one is longer than the other. Well, that's not supposed to be the case. And these did not line up here. So I went line by line into this one. Sure enough, I am missing a piece between here. So I'll show you how to get that fixed. But before I do that, let's really, let's check this one really quickly just to make sure that this one is okay. Yep, this one's good. Okay, so at this point, what you wanna do is get out your seam ripper. Now remember at the beginning, I said you need a seam ripper because you never know when you need one. I of course need one right now. And we're going to seam rip this area right here. Now you notice how I'm not seam ripping, like in my video, how to use a seam ripper, you may be surprised, because I have a seam right here. And I wanna avoid getting that seam torn open. So I'm gonna be very gentle and do stitch by stitch. Now after I seam rip that, next thing I wanna do is I wanna iron this side so that it is flat again, so that's nice and flat. Now, this is why this is my favorite seam ripper, because it has an eraser on the end that you can just quickly take out all those errant threads. So you don't need tweezers, just like that. And all of those are gone. So I am missing one of these. So now at this point, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna sew it to this side and then I'm gonna sew it to this side and then I'm gonna continue back on and continuing on. Now, remember, as I said um, with the first couple of rows, make sure your pieces are good. That's why I caught this one because I was going through piece by piece to make sure they're all correct. 
All right, resume speed up. are done because our rows are done now we can move on to the next step of the actual sewing of the rows um, now whenever I combine them I put them in the opposite order so this is actually rows one and two sewn together three and four five and six seven and eight and so on and so on so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to reverse this and count how many rows I have because remember we when we have an odd number we always want to leave 
this first one out because this one isn't combined. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's perfect. So we have an even number. So I have eight rows. Perfect. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to group them in sets of two and I'm going to sew these together in sets of two because just like whenever I did the initial rows, I did sets of two and then pin them together. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these together and pin them together. Sew these together, then pin them. Sew these together, pin them. Sew these together, pin them. Sew these two together, pin them. Sew these two together, pin them. And then I'll sew these last two together and pin it. And then we'll come back for, uh, for the top reveal minus the borders and then start on those borders. Now, when you're sewing these together, it's the same thing as sewing those strips. So when you're sewing the initial strips at the beginning, you just wanna sew those um, together. Now, I actually thought of this while I was uh, um, piecing this together. Uh, as you're putting your rows together, remember to double check to make sure your pieces have not been flipped. If your pieces have been flipped and you're discovering it then, I do have a video all about how to fix flipped pieces within your quilt. Um, if you are watching this, um, with the condensed replay, I've got the link down below. Um, if you're watching this live, you can just go to my YouTube and search flipped pieces and it'll come right up. Uh, all right, so our trickster god, main section of the quilt is finished. Now it's time for borders. So let's take a look at the pattern. Our pattern has us putting on the borders on the top and the bottom first, then the left and the right. I do this for a reason. So all of my quilts will always measure under 42 inches for the width. That's because if you don't put any additional borders on, 
Um, you can just use any old width of fabric for the backing and you don't have to sew backing together or get wide backed fabric. Um, and it's also easier, again, this is why I do it this way for the borders. If you do decide to add on extra borders, you want to do it in the same exact order. This way, you don't have to sew pieces together for the top and the bottom again. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to take our quilt. Whoops. I hit that, uh, my side camera. Oops, that's the left and the right. So we're going to take our quilt and I'm going to do the cheating way of doing borders. Now I do have a video all about how to do borders of quilts. Um, I am going to show you the cheating method, which is I actually show you in the video. I show you the cheating method and I show you the, the method you're supposed to be doing, especially if you uh, put your quilts into competitions. I like the easy cheating method personally. So iron out your fabric. It's very, very important that you iron your fabric and you have all of those creases out. Uh, make sure you line it up so that your salvage, remember the salvage is the little part on the end of your fabric that's got, um, they have some dots or some discolorings. Make sure your salvage is all the way off. And then fold it together, right sides to right sides. And then we're going to put it in place just like we did when we we're sewing our rows together. So remember, we're doing our rows together. We're sewing every single seam. So I'm going along and I'm finding where the seams are and I'm just smoothing it and pinning it. I'm not stretching the fabric on the bottom or the top. I'm just smoothing it along and then pinning it. And I'm going to go through and do this all the way down. And when I get to the end, I'm going to trim off the very, very end. We do not want to have a huge tail of a piece hanging on to our quilt that we have to worry about whenever we're sewing. So when you get all the way down, making sure you do the whole thing. Oh, here we go. Here's a big space where it's a big gap of six and a half inches from seam to seam. So I'm going to take a pin and put it in the middle right there because we don't want to have a huge gap where there's no pins. Now you can also do this with clips. You do not have to use pins. You can use clips as well. So then I'm going to trim that and I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it over in my scrap pile that we're going to use later. All right, so I'm going to turn this around and do this the other way. All right, so same thing. I'm going to iron this and then sew this on so that we'll sew it. Pin it, pin it on to the other side. Now, I'm not going to sew this yet. I'm going to take this and I am going to move this to my sewing machine, but I'm going to take this opportunity to now get number nine together because there's, I do have to do some sewing for the left and the right. So there should be three strips left that you have cut. So from these three strips, we're going to take one and we're going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to take this half piece and I'm going to sew it to each of the other strips. Now, when we do this, we want to make sure that we cut off the salvages. You do not want to include those salvages whenever you're doing that. So first thing I'm going to do is line this up, trim that salvage off, and then pin it into place. There we are. So I'm going to have to sew this one and let's do the other one. So I'm taking my fabric, laying it out, lining up right side to right side and lining that salvage up so that I can trim it and get a nice straight line and then pinning it. So that after I sew the edges, so that now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew along the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to come sew two of these. And then I will come back and show you the next step of it. OK, 
Okay, once we have sewn this, now we need to iron it. So we're going to iron the top and the bottom. I'm gonna iron these borders away from my main quilt. So we're gonna iron these away. Once we iron both of these away, then I'm gonna come back and then I will trim it up and show you how to trim it. I'm also, while I'm ironing these, I am gonna go ahead and iron these as well. So when I iron it, all I am doing is just ironing that. It can go to one side or open. It is completely up to you. Okay, so we've got these all ironed. So now what I wanna do is square these up. I do not have to square up my entire quilt. All I need to do is square up this little bit. So I'm going to line this up and square that up for the edge. And then the same thing down here. So I'm going through all four corners and I'm trimming up these edges. That one's actually not bad. And then these two, flipping it over. And once you trim up these four corners, then we're gonna go back through and add the left and the right. And then we'll talk about adding additional borders. There we go. So it's the same exact thing that I just did, that I did with the top and the bottom, except I have a combined piece. So my personal preference, whenever I have a combined piece, is I like finding the short end. <coughs> Excuse me. I like finding the short end, the side that's the half that I've, I've sewn onto here. And I like to start with that because sometimes if I don't start with that one, I may get just like a little chunk kind of on the end. And I don't like that. I like it to look as even as possible just because I'm weird. So all I'm gonna be doing then is starting with that shorter end and moving all the way down and just pinning on the left and the right of these, sewing it, ironing it. So when I iron these two, I'm gonna be ironing them away from the quilt, just like I ironed the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to come back, trim those edges, and then we'll stop the speed camera and talk about additional borders. And there it is. So let me show you over here so you can see in the small panel how nice that looks with that extra border added on all the way around. It really finishes it off just like a picture frame does. So now at this point you have two decisions. You're either finished or you want to add another border. Now, I do have a video, uh, if you're watching the condensed version, I've linked it down below, like I said, all about borders. Um, so it'll, if you want to add extra borders, it teaches you all that stuff as well. Uh, but I am going to do a quick refresher now. I'm not going to deep dive, super deep dive into it. But So make sure if you really want to understand borders, watch that video. But at this point, now what we need to do is we need to audition fabrics. So instead of going back and grabbing all of my fabrics, what I like to do is I like to fold all of my quilt so that I can see all the colors that are in here. So now I can see all the basic colors that are in this quilt right here. Then I go back to my scraps and I go to my solid pieces and we figure out, okay, well, what looks good as a secondary border? And I slip it underneath. So we figure out what color do I want for that border all the way around? Just, nope, I don't want another one of those. Oh, there's a green. And then we can see, oops. Yeah, let me do that, there we go. 
we can see what looks best. And then the gold. So you can look at it and go, oh, you know what? That black really looks nice. But that green, that green would make a really good secondary port. The blue, because really in the entire quilt, that is the only blue. The blue would also look good. I wouldn't do the gray. I wouldn't do the tan for this one just because it blends in too much. Remember rule number one, we want to think about contrasting. We want to think about how fabric looks against other fabric and we want to have a good large contrast. So I would really do either of those. The gold I think may be too much, but you never know. You might like that. Now let's say if you once you decide, so let's say I decide on this blue, okay? Well let me calculate how much I would need. Okay, so we take all that aside. Okay, so for the blue, all right? Remember, this right here was a two inch border. Meaning, if we take off our uh, seam allowance, this is a one and a half inch finished border. So, borders should be relative to each other. What that means, this is a one and a half inch finished. I can either do another, one and a half inch finished, and that's what it's gonna look like. So at this point, I audition how big it's going to be. So I've got the one and a half inch, or let me cut this off just a little bit. There we go. Or I could do a three inch border. So if you want a wider border in order to really frame that, I could do a three inch. I could do a six inch border. If I really wanna have a nice thick border with two C's all the way around, um, maybe a six inch border. So decide how big of a border you want. Then you do the math. Um, from that, now remember, when if I want a three inch border, I'm gonna be cutting my strips three and a half inches. If I want a six inch border, I'm gonna be cutting them six and a half inches. Because we have to add on those extra seam allowances. So then we're going to measure our quilt. So we're gonna take this quilt, fold it in half, measure it, then we're gonna take it and fold it in half this way and measure it and figure out exactly how much. Now, remember what I just said. I have figured this out so you may not have to do, so this way, put it on here. So you may, now you may have to do two strips down here instead of one and a half strips on the right and the left, but for that first border of the top and the bottom, no matter how thick it is, if you put along the top and the bottom, you only need a single strip. That's why I laid these patterns out the way that I did. So let's say if we do a six inch strip, we're gonna cut, I'm gonna cut one, two, three, four, five to start with. I'm gonna put a border on the top. I'm gonna put a border on the bottom. I'm then going to sew it, iron it, come back, trim, trim it, and then measure it. So we always, when we're doing our math, assume our strips are 40 inches wide, whether it's 42, 43, 44, we always assume the length is gonna be 40 inches, just for easy math. And then we're gonna take this and fold this in half. If it's more than 60 inches, we're gonna need two strips. So I have to cut another strip for the left and the right. If it's under 60 inches tall, great. I can use my, my uh, strip and a half that I did for the first set of borders. So hopefully that all makes sense. If not, watch the border video and it gets into it in a little bit more detail, a little bit more depth. But like I said, if you're not adding extra borders, you're done. And that's it. There is our God of Mischief. Uh-oh. Okay, all right, that scared me for a second. I looked in the bottom right and I saw those two dots and then I had to look at my quilt in the upper left-hand corner and be like, wait, is that how it's supposed to be? Yes, that's how it's supposed to be. That is, that is all how it's supposed to be. I did not flip any pieces. I did not make any mistakes. As much as I, I look at it, I'm like, wait, did I make? No, 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 that's right, that's right, that's all right. And that's your God of Mischief.
So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learn how to make a pixel quilt, more specifically, the guy, my God of Mischief, based off of Loki. Um, don't forget to like this video, follow my YouTube, as well as Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, my Quite Nerdy Quilters Facebook group, uh, all, all the things, just all the things.